iStrain as a developer and a designer and why it's a hazard and some of the tips we can use to avoid it. Whether you're a brand new developer just starting out or you've been coding for years then this can affect the rest of your life which is why you have to hit like and subscribe so we can jump straight into it. In the first part of this video I'll expand on my own story with iStrain and in the second we'll take a look at the five tips that you can use to reduce it. Now to give you guys some background I'm just a regular Aussie developer sitting on my computer probably all day and all night and you shouldn't be surprised to hear that my eyes aren't great. It all started when I was actually young, very young, probably 10 or 15 years old, and I was already sitting in front of the computers for hours on end. I would play games, I would watch anime and movies, and I would start to learn to program and code as well. And like most people at that age, I didn't really know about the importance of good eye care, so I was just on that computer for ages, and this resulted in me becoming short-sighted. I started to squint more and more, and this was noticeable both in class and when I was in front of computers or TVs, and I started to lose focus as well, which was hard to concentrate when I'm trying to study or do anything really. I had to start sitting closer to the computer, to the TV. When I was reading a book, it had to be right in my face, and if I went to the cinema, I had to start sitting in the front row. It got to the point where I couldn't read anything from far away. As you can imagine, both myself and my parents were pretty concerned at that time. After going to the optometrist, I learned that I had to start wearing glasses all the time, and I didn't like this at all. And yet, I still kept sitting on the computer for hours and hours simply because I loved what I was doing, and this meant that my eyesight kept getting worse and worse, which absolutely sucked. This is sort of when I realized that something really needed to change. My eyes were being strained on a daily basis, and I needed to figure out whether it was possible to stop this or reverse it and how I could do so without having to give up using the computer completely. The first thing I learned is that it's not that easy. Our eyes are continuously developing until the age of 18 where they start to stabilize. I learned some of the things to look out for when your eyes are getting strained. Things like eye fatigue, or maybe getting dry eyes, or even just getting a headache. And I also learned about the different things that you can do if your eyes are ready to the point that you're short-sighted or long-sighted. Things like eye surgery, which comes with a level of danger and risk, or just wearing even contact lenses, which is like plastic and silicone in your eyes. After all this searching, it's too little too late. For me, the damage is already done, but there are a number of things that I've now learned that I implement to make sure that I don't get any worse. And these are the things that I wanna teach you. I personally stopped wearing glasses because for me, I didn't like them at all. And eye surgery was a little bit too risky. So instead, what I'm doing now is wearing contact lenses. This is the closest that I can get to to feel normal again, but in terms of all of this, I did learn a number of valuable rules and techniques that I want to share with you in terms of how long to use the screen for, when to take breaks, and other things that we'll be going over shortly. These days, I'm on the computer more than I ever was back then, up to 5-10 to 10 hours a day. This isn't to say that I don't care about my eyes anymore, it's the opposite, I care for them more than I ever had, and hopefully this video will show you why you should care for yours as well. This is why I'm doing this video now, so that you know the importance of taking care of your eyes while they're are still good and not for when it's too late. So let's take a look at the five tips to reduce eye strain, especially if you're a developer or a designer. Tip number five on this list is the brightness of your monitor. The last thing that you want is for your eyes to start bleeding, which is why I'm wearing these sunglasses right now. This means that when you're working, especially at nighttime, you want to turn down the brightness of your monitor. A lot of the monitors these days, they do have low light versions or low light features, essentially, which allow you to be able to have a brightness level that's more consistent with what's a little bit more natural during the day. Now, for my monitor, I'm just going to turn it down right over here, and this should give me the ability to take off my own sunglasses without my eyes bleeding too much. So. Let's try that now. And see, while this is a lot better, I can't see as much in my room now, which means that we'll move on to our next tip. And our next tip here is to get yourself sponsored by BenQ, to get yourself a screen bar, which is essentially a replacement for a traditional desk lamp, which sometimes isn't as useful when you're trying to do things at nighttime on the computer. Let's open this up and see how well it works in terms of protecting my eyes at night. I'm not going to bore you with some unpacking, so here's a montage that lasts two seconds, and let's have a look at this thing. 
If you're doing a lot of programming at night like I am, then you know how much of an effect it can have when you're just staring at a screen without any lighting around. This is why a lamp is useful, but the screen bar here from BenQ, which is technically like a reading lamp but that sits on top of your screen is quite useful. It's got a few different features here, things like having cool temperatures and warm temperatures, different brightness levels and something that also auto adjusts. So this is useful in the fact that I could even do some reading or view my iPad here and it's not filling up my whole room. Of course, I've got some tools here to do that. And for example, I do like some of these LED lights that give my room a little bit more dynamic range as well. And combining all of these makes for a really good setup where I can work late into the night without too much worry. Tip number three when you're coding is to have a good font and font size because there are certain fonts out there which are hard to read and they'll cause some eye strain. Personally, there are some good ones like Roboto or Ubuntu or even Open Sans, but my favorite is IBM Plex. You should check that font out. I might link it in the description so you can have a look too. The other thing is obviously having the right font size. Right now, this code is tiny and yes, I might be able to see all the functions on a page, but it's going to make me squint. So making the size of your VS code bigger so that you can focus in on what you're writing is a much better way for your eyes to reduce the strain you're applying on them. These days, you can get glasses that block blue light, which is really cool. And this is some of that harmful light that causes eye strain when we're on the computer for too long. This is why tip number two here is a really good one, and it's getting some good glasses that do this. There are some good options out there. These days, if you go to an optometrist, they'll have glasses like this, similar to sunglasses that block light of blue variety to a certain percentage. Of course, you can jump on the Gunner's website, which also does these, and this is where I got these pair, and I found that this helps me work during the day and at night, because my eyes don't get as tired as they normally would do if I'm just staring at a screen with lots of blue light all day. I did do some quick feedback from other people, and I noticed that I'm not the only person that uses these types of glasses. There are lots of other programmers that use them too, and they found that the results were the same, that they've had less headaches and less eye strain in general when they were wearing glasses like this. So this is something that I definitely recommend, and it's nearly one of my most favorite tips. Okay, you're finally here. Tip number one, when you're working a lot on the computer, especially during the day and at nighttime, and you want to reduce eye strain, and this is to enable dark mode on a lot of the websites that you visit. Because when you're essentially looking at white light all day and all night, your eyes will get tired and fatigued. But by swapping the websites, say Twitter, I have here as an example, and I'm just gonna switch this over in display to night mode. And then here I've got Reddit, which is probably my second most favorite website. And I'm also gonna set that here to night mode. The difference this makes is huge. I'm sure you can already see it in the video, just how much of an impact it has when you're staring at a screen for so long. This is one of the really useful things that you can develop, whether you're a website developer or even if you're just viewing websites. And this is why I like that so many websites are introducing this. Of course, if you're just using VS Code, it already has night mode. Most of the themes are dark, but in general, if you're doing a lot of VS Code, having a dark theme in there generally is also a good idea. I personally like the one atom dark theme, and that looks really good for me.